welcome back. Well, over the past two years of the show, we've regularly spoken to Western Sydney Labor MP about his, um, Ed Husick, about his campaign to lower software prices for Australian consumers and businesses. When we first spoke, he was calling for an inquiry. He got that. And as predicted on this show, he even played tough and subpoenaed recalcitrant American IT, IT giants to give evidence. Finally, the report was released this week. And even though he's moved on to bigger things on the front bench, he's here to finish what he began by explaining what he's achieved. Mr Ed Husick. Good evening. Yes, so even though you've sort of moved out of being mm. chair of the inquiry, given you spent all the time, that was only recently, we thought it was appropriate. Um, well, thank I, you for the promo, but I wasn't the chair. I was just a... A oh, yeah. member there, there is of a new chair, Champion sorry. That's right. Assume that, uh, that mantle. But and I just said you moved on job. to bigger yes. things. But this was your baby. Mm. So you get the report. You're happy with the final report? Oh, it's a cracker of a report. <laughs> I think <laughs> if you, you do say the... so yourself. No, no, no. Well, uh, see, the thing is, I had to move on, and, uh, uh, you know, this was effectively driven by Nick Champion, and he uh, put together those, the breadth of those recommendations uh, really give, you know, a lot of food for thought, and they do. Um, uh, seek to get people um, thinking hard about some of the issues that uh, are working against promoting competition. Well, let's look at the positives out of it. it firstly, it confirmed everything mm -hmm. you suspected, that we pay up to double the price, more, um, that we're being gouged. It, it proved everything that you've been saying. That would be the best thing, and it has recommendations. What were the key points to come out of it to recommend that you think are the most positive? Well, I think it's looked at um, reforming... Uh, particularly competition law, looking at the issue of geo-blocking, uh, looking at ways to, uh, to promote uh, choice within the market. Um, the, the best sign that you know, competition uh, is being eroded within a market is when you've got price discrimination running rampant within it, where companies can set different prices in different markets based on the fact that they can get away with it. And that's what they've been saying Isn't for Isn't that ages. called capitalism? Well, yeah, it is, but at the same time too, you know, that capitalism is hurting our businesses. As I've said on this program before, my big concern was that businesses were paying more for hardware and software and that that was, laying, that was uh, putting in a layer of fat, inflationary fat within the economy. And so we need to be able to see business costs dri driven down to ensure that people can access the benefits of the ne NBN network as it rolls out and get more of the productivity and the economic benefit that that will uh, unleash. Which is great in theory, but Nick Champion says in this, he admits, we can't control prices. Mm. So at the end of the yeah, day, no matter right. what you say or do, no offence, but what's the point of something if you can't control the prices, no, which Nick's, is what it was all about? Nick, Nick's absolutely right. We're not, look, this was never about, if anything, this is about uh, more of um, deregulating and, and giving more of a competitive spurt within the market. This is, what's happened is the market has... Uh, grown fat off charging mm. uh, prices here that are quite yeah, high. Yeah, you've identified so that, the problem. The case. How do you fix so, it if so you can't control about, pricing? For example, looking at and some of the recommendations, and I obviously I've moved from a role of being an advocate mm. as a backbencher to one where in government we have to consider the breadth mm. of the, the proposals and respond accordingly. But you know, some of the things there in terms of opening up. Uh, or, or preventing the, uh, the practice of geo-blocking. Now, can you explain well? geo-blocking? I've so been geo really excited about this interview because I thought a lot of the journalists didn't explain it properly and as a Luddite myself, wasn't up on the term. So explain what it is and how we fix it so, or stop it. So you might, for example, the, the easiest way is, and I, I hope Apple can forgive me, but they're the most prominent yeah. player. So iTunes um, here, when you're located in Australia, you'll be directed to the iTunes store here in Australia. Mm -hmm. If you go... Um, to the U US store and seek to buy something, you get redirected to the Australian site. You'll see two different prices. Unless you buy your iTunes cards in the US and, there are and ways sign to up. Yeah, I can but tell a lot you. of people don't know that. That's true. Right? And, and there are, um, you know, you have to go through a number of hoops to, to uh, overcome that. You can also have what's called a, a VPN, a virtual private network that sidesteps your, you know, you won't have your IP address come up. It'll look like it's one based overseas and then you can access that way. But what some of the firms are doing is they're saying if you use that type of system in their terms and conditions, you won't be allowed to buy their service or their product. So, so that's a legislative thing yeah. you'd have to stop. Yeah. I mean, how do you stop it? It sounds like to me geo-blocking is a global thing. Is there anything we can actually do apart from telling people how to circumvent it? And let's face it, these are smart companies. They'll come up with a way around it. Legislative, as a government, is there anything you can do? I, I think uh, around the world people will... Um, uh, like this issue got raised today, and I don't want to get you into any grief, but Foxtel today 
came out and suggested it was naive to look at geo-blocking because they have distribution uh, agreements that, uh, particularly in terms of the, the um, shows that they air, that they don't want to see those distribution agreements messed up and they call this whole move naive. Well, we've been talking and about And you say to that? Well, I say to that um, uh, two things. One is we've been talking about this for ages, so welcome to the party. And second, um, now that they've realised that we've been discussing it, but second, uh, Malcolm Turnbull actually today um, made a really good comment which I wholeheartedly agree with because we're on the same platform, which is um, that these type of geographic restrictions on being able to access content and product um, are going to come under increasing threat. And he's absolutely right. He's, he made these comments I love today. it when you have a touch of bipartisanship. Yeah, but, but You're good is, on this. But, but this is right. I mean, this is the internet has been basically tearing down these type of edifices. Has any country managed to stop geo-blocking? Not yet. We're, so we're why do you think well, little old Australia would be able to? Well, why have we always got to adopt the cringe, Janine? Why <laughs> well, do we I say just, that we have to have someone know, else do it first? Well, they're already ripping us off for double the price. We haven't been able to well, do anything. Well, I mean, I think, you know, I'm not confident. Sometimes you've got to go out there and, like I said, you have to rattle a few cages and, and get things moving. And look, I'm only one voice. There'll be many in this debate. Um, and well, on that, I want to ask about the bipartisanship. I mean, you know, God forbid that there would be a change of government. We'll get to that. But say that the unthinkable happened and you're out of office. Do you have confidence as someone who pushes bipartisanship? Do you get the feeling that your work would be carried on by the next government? What's, do, have they got a policy on this or is that one of the ones in the never, never we've uh, got to wait look, for? Look, I couldn't. It's, it's up to them, the other side but of But did you get the feeling that there was, out. you quoted Malcolm today. Well, do you yeah, think there uh, might? Look, I think he, he was... Um, yeah, really uh, good on this, and I think it's more a reflection of reality that you know the way that the internet's headed and the way that it's challenged the modes of production and distribution within our economy. But uh, I have to say too, within the committee, we had an excellent you know set, like from the Nationals and from the Liberals that worked on the committee with us that wanted to get a sense of well, why are we being forced to pay these prices? So. Uh I'm hoping that they will. Well, the coalition is the Let's party of business and they have come out offering to help small business and bring down prices. So it would be incumbent on any party to look at this as a way, a well, simple way to do it. Let me give you these final stats. So um, the, the inquiry found 50% higher on both roughly on, on hardware, software. Census found last year, and I've quoted this previously, SMEs looking to invest about 10000 in upgrading hardware and software through the course of the last 12 months. Two million SMEs. You do the rough maths, $10 billion, nothing to sneeze at. There is a lot at stake in getting these prices down. While we're in the whole new tech, high tech area, one of your areas of responsibility, uh, your new areas on the front bench, is the MBN. Mm -hmm. It's been a bit of a spat emerge between the MBN chairman and the opposition leader. Um, what do you make of that? Well, I think uh, you know it has been such a contentious area and the opposition, I think, have crossed um, some lines, I think, uh, you know, in the way that they pursued Mike Quigley uh, in times past, um, I, I think has been out of bounds. Um, and, you know, it doesn't surprise me. It looks me like the board that... and the chairman got rid of him. I'm, I'm a bit surprised on that. They, I would well, have thought they would be welcoming. No, They'd I all be friendly, of, wouldn't they? A lot of people uh, have speculated uh, about what's going on, but Mike Quigley did a, an incredible job in taking this from. You know, dot on a page to the, the plans that it has and we've, the way that we're going. So, so are you disappointed that the MBN chairman and board seem to oust him? No, I'm not. <laughs> you're trying to suggest a whole lot of things and a lot of other people have speculated. Um, but what I would say is Mike Quigley's done a phenomenal job. Um, this is, uh, you know, starting to pick up steam in terms of the rollout itself. Um, and, uh, you know, in terms of when you contrast to what the opposition will do, yeah, their, their plan will be cheaper and okay. it'll be done quicker. Without getting into but that. It'll be, it'll be a dud of a, a program and it will not do and achieve. Can we just what go we're to the main forward. issue that seems to be the point of contention between the opposition communication spokesman and the MBN chairman? It appears they hired a lobbying firm to help lobby for them. Um, do you think that's appropriate use of funds? Well, they, uh, you know, boards make these decisions. They ultimately. You know, take on board um, what they want to do, and they they give effect to it. So, um, if it's within the, uh, you know, we've been giving okay. them a, they've got a job to do in terms of rolling out uh, broadband. But you know, they've also had the opposition okay, making quick, some quite, quite ex over the top attacks on. I've them. got a very quick, two quick questions, very quick answers. Firstly, do you have full confidence in the MBN chairman and board? Yes. Okay. Secondly, do you know when this election's coming? I ask you this every time. Any idea? Give us a tip. Envelope. Should we do it like the Oscars? Just give us a rough idea. No, of course I don't know. <laughs> Damn. Okay. I'd sooner... like to break a lot of things on the parent. Do you report. want it sooner rather than later, like um, us? 
Or well, do you I not think, care? You know, I want it when the time is right. Oh, you are so diplomatic. Ed Husick, well, thank you. Well, it's a change for me. <laughs> Congratulations on your report. Thank you I'm sure much. we'll be talking to you thank when you. that election. Apparently there is an election coming at some time. That's it for tonight, but do watch tomorrow night because we have Richard Farley. You saw him recently on Australian Story. He'll be talking to us exclusively. Bye.